Hi everybody, Drum Tech Kenny Sherritt's here uh, with my continuing series on how to set up drums utilizing my brand new Questlove Breakbeats kit. I uh, love these little kits, man. Uh, for the price, you cannot beat these things, man, especially if you've always wanted a little 16 inch kick drum. Uh, and I'm loving this kick drum. So it, there was part one. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's called Making the T shirt uh, pillow for this kick drum. Man, it makes all the difference. If you're a jazzy guy, you want that open sound. Then the heads they come with with the uh, extra rings on them are great. The bass drum will ring a little bit, but that's okay. You get that nice punch sing. For rock, you know, if you want a little chunk in your funk, for the rock that I play and the pop gigs I play, you need a little more punch. So, of course, come on in here and check this out. We have the pillow placed, as I said you should, with the Velcro strips holding it in place. When this folds back, it'll go right against the head. Now, the most important thing when setting up a bass drum, you'll notice, is that this hoop can go back and forth, slide all around. You don't want that. You want to center this bad boy. Because it's such a big collar for the bass drum, it's such a big flexible hoop, a lot of times wood hoops will be flexible, you want to make sure it's nice and centered. And one of the ways I guarantee this is by using a two-hand technique to finger tighten these lugs. Now, I still follow your standard radial pattern for tuning drums. You know, there's a three, uh, six lug pattern, five lug pattern, eight lug pattern, 10 lug pattern, 12 lug pattern. Uh, chase those patterns down online and use them. But for me right now, I'm using what I call the plus X. When you're facing me, I make the plus and set these four down so this hoop doesn't move, it doesn't shuffle on me. I ain't chasing it, it just settles right down. And I follow the same thing with this. Now these lugs are tuning nicely and smoothly because I use Napa Sil Glide. If you haven't seen my video on homage to Sil Glide, man, check it out, man, because it's got a lot of good information about using this wonderful product to make your trunks last forever and function really well. Then you notice the posing patterns, nice solid finger tight, mm, finger tight. Now, especially with a bass drum, it's such a big, a big spectrum of tuning, even if on, on a small kick like this, uh, you really want to double check your finger tightening. And when I say finger tight, I mean finger tight. You don't want it to move at all because hopefully we can get enough tension on this thing to where we don't have to tune it up too much. The lowest possible tension possible that still feels good against your foot. Anyways. So I'm double checking my centering, making sure I'm not pulling any funny directions or anything, making sure this hoop is nice and solid. And as I've shown in some other tuning videos, you always double check, press down opposing sides of the hoop, see if anything gives a little too much. If it all feels even, you probably start pretty, you know, you're starting pretty even. If it gives a little, man, check it out. You might want to push it down, turn it a little bit, make sure it's all in balance. Now with this one, you mute that bottom head, like I always say gently with your hands, so you just listen to this top head. Oh, and except for these two, we got a pretty even palette. So again, we've got a basic palette to start from, and this is my recommendation. Don't go too far, man. Grab your two keys. Uh, here's my ergonomic Evans drum keys. Love these things. And with bass drums especially, man, all I really want to do is get rid of the flap, man. I just don't want that wrinkle. I just want it to settle, man. So I'll give it just these little bits. Little bits. Following that radial pattern. Mmm. The good thing about those two keys, you can feel, oh, that was just a little looser than the other. I feel it. I feel it. And that's why I love two keys. So you check out, make sure you got no flap. And surprisingly enough, with very little effort, I was able to get a nice balanced head at low tension. That sings which means this thing's ready to rock and roll, man. Let's set her up and see how she sounds. All right, everybody, and this is what it looks like installed. You can see it's just barely gracing the front of that bass drum head, barely gracing the back of the bass drum head. The Velcro spots keep it in place. And let's see how it sounds. I'm gonna hand this camera off here. Put a few of these drums in place. Use these bags to keep the volume down. But of course, they come with the bags, which means they kick butt for volume control. And why don't you come around the front here and check out and hear what this kick drum sounds like. Mmm. That's a lot of bottom end for a 16-inch kick drum, man. Punchy, tight, yet still got the fullness of the kick. So that little itty-bitty t-shirt pillow really made a difference. What do you think, Liz?